Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is part two of the This Keyword tutorial. Um, I'm going to go pull up my website here, javacjava.com, click on the little pop-out menu, go to the Java OOP Tutorials. Scroll down here to this keyword, part two. In part one, we learned that the this keyword contains a reference to the current object from inside of the object. We can use this to invoke other overloaded constructors from within the code block of a constructor. There's one important rule to remember that this statement used to invoke another constructor must be the first statement of the constructor's code block. In this tutorial, I want to make my unit of measurement instance variable default to inches. I will use this to do just that. There's one more rule that is a little more advanced to explain at this point. You won't need to understand the purpose of, super, of the super keyword just yet, but a constructor can only have a call to either the super statement or the this statement. Both cannot be called within the same code block. And by the way, both of them, if you're going to call one or the other, has to be the first statement in the code block, too. Okay, let's come down here, highlight all this. Control C to copy, or right click and select copy. Let's go ahead and move the browser off screen here. Go down to start, search, type in CMD. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start run, type in CMD. Type in Java C. You should see a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. If you don't, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. I want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly. Type in CLS. CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. Backslash tells it to go to the root. Uh, make directory MD Java. I already have it, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Then change directories to the Java folder. Make another directory here, and we're going to call it uh, this keyword two notepad this keyword two dot java. This keyword two dot java is going to be the name of our source code file. Control V to paste, and let's go ahead and save this. <laughs> okay, so. Um, from part one, I've removed a few things out of there, like displaying what the actual uh, box, what the actual reference variable value was, and what the this value actually was. So, took all that stuff out just to simplify this a little bit more. So, um, everything is still the same on that. We've still got these three or these four instance variables here, and basically, what do we want to do in this tutorial is to default the unit of measurement instance variable to inches, okay? So, I'm going to do that using um, the this to call a constructor. And basically that works as you, as you have the keyword this, and then you got your open and closing parentheses, and then you put in some arguments here, right? And what the compiler will do is it will search for the constructor that has the correct number of parameters to match these arguments, okay? Now, one of the things I said is you can only have either have, you know, super or this. If we had both of them in there, it's gonna, it's gonna produce an error. So we'll just remove this for the default constructor, or should say the no argument constructor. Um, then, uh, the first constructor we created, we just had these three uh, statements in there. I've replaced that now with um, this and then length, width, height, right? And those are these parameters coming in right here, right? That length, width, and height is not these length, width, and height because you would have to refer to it as like this, but that would make no sense, right? Okay, so anyway, so um, we've now modified these so nothing's going to break at all. We're just going to initialize in the default constructor there because someone would be using our getter and setter methods in that particular case. They wouldn't even have the constructor. So basically it'll, it'll just uh, pass in 0, 0, 0 for the length, width, and height. And then inches will now be the default value assigned to unit of measurement. Okay. 
and um, same thing down here, right? Uh, if they're using our first flavor of the constructor, right, the first one we created, if they're using that version, it'll uh, just pass over length, width, and height, these parameter values as arguments into that, and then plus our new default value of inches. And then so our new constructor where we have the unit of measurement in there, it'll go ahead and set all of the instance variables up here using the this plus the dot operator, right? And then it'll set it equal to these parameter values here, height, width, and then unit of measurement. So essentially we've just kind of cleaned up all of our code, everything will default to inches so we can display that out in like cubic inches or whatnot there, but we still can allow them to override that unit of measurement if they use this particular version of the constructor. Okay? They can also use the set unit of measurement um, setter method down here as well. So we're providing the greatest amount of flexibility to, to, uh, for, for people who are using our class to create an object out of it, you know, while still providing, you know, awesome backward compatibility, which is super important. So in the, this keyword two class, we've got our main method entry point. We're creating our new box B reference variable to a new box object, and that box object has the default box constructor here. So when we do this, it'll invoke the, B, the uh, the empty no argument box constructor here, right? And in the first line of its code block, it will, uh, the, this statement will basically invoke the constructor, the box constructor, by the way, um, with that matches these four arguments, which means it'll come down here and it'll go ahead and pass in zero, zero, zero and inches. And then this box constructor will go ahead and set all that. And then, then our object is fully initialized at that point once we have a reference to B. And then using our setter methods, we can actually set the length, width and height, length, height and width. So nothing changes if anyone's using this, right? Now, uh, one thing I've added in is, the, is um, basically plus cubic and then unit of measurement, right? So we can calculate the volume and display cubic, whatever. In the second version of our program, or our class that we had, we, had, we did this sort of stuff here, right? Where the constructor takes three integer, uh, param well, takes three integer arguments we provided up here, and then this constructor takes three integer parameters here, right? So it'll match this one and it'll say, okay, I got length four, it'll go ahead and height eight and width three, right? It will pass two, so this will basically say, okay, we wanna invoke a constructor that matches length, height, width, and inches, which is this constructor right here. That's the constructor signature <clears throat> that matches it. Length, height, width, and unit of measurement, which we're putting in right there. So basically it'll pass in, it'll receive four, eight, three, and it will pass four, eight, three in inches into the new constructor, four, eight, three in inches. And that will go ahead and set our instance variable length, height, width to those particular values, right? Okay. And then in our last, um, last version of it, of the uh, box class that we added in this last constructor right here, we can just basically call in uh, new and then box. So we'll get it when our box object is initialized, it'll call this particular signature of the box constructor, which has three integer parameters and a string. And you can see I've put in centimeters here because I chose this one to be centimeters so I can change my unit of measurement. Um, so that will come down here and find this and it'll just simply, you know, set these appropriate parameter values to the um, To the instance variables Okay, let's go ahead and save this out and run it here compile it and run it Okay, uh, so we compiled okay, and let's go ahead and run it there so we get the volume of box B is 100 cubic inches the volume of box C is 96 cubic inches, right? So 10 times two times five, that's 100. Four times eight is 32 times three is 96. 
and then that I'm sure equals 5,670 cubic centimeters, right? Okay, so that's basically about it for this tutorial there. I just want to leave you with some final thoughts. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. And the ability to overload constructors provides a really cool tool to ensure that your code will always have scalability while at the same time supporting previous versions. Using this to invoke new constructors provides a smooth way to add new members and functionality to your classes. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.